Hey everybody, so a bit of a different view this week because I went and picked up a new camera uh, because I was tired of the way that one on my laptop was working and so I think this will actually help you uh, see me better but also improve the overall quality of the video and of my audio. So uh, I hope that's the case at least. Also grab something from behind me so that you didn't have to look at the continued uh, bare wall, though I do think it's quite not, not quite big enough. So anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, what we're doing this week is moving on into more of a discussion of uh, the next step in your writing, which is to finish the draft of your argument paper. And so for this week's uh, materials, we're going to look at something that's a really helpful resource that you can use now and throughout any sort of writing environment you have called the SEAL method. And uh, we'll take a look at that here in just a second. And then uh, I'm going to give you uh, some information about how to <clears throat> write a compelling conclusion with the idea here that you will complete a rough draft by this Sunday. So let's dive right in. So if you take a look at uh, the information here, this is our uh, Blackboard page and this is what you'll see. So if you'll scroll down here to week 13, uh, you will see everything here. Here's the objectives and checklist, and that has everything on it. It's always a good idea to check in there. And then if you click on instructional materials, you'll see the link for this video and this uh, discussion of something called the SEAL method. And this was more or less brought up by one of our old professors here, Dr. Uh, Evans, who was one of my professors and was up until recently retired. Uh, it's a great way of not only discussing complex information, but presenting it in a very clear and concise way. So he came up with this method uh, and I think it'll be quite helpful for you. So we're gonna download this file because it's a PowerPoint. You can view it there if you want to, but I would recommend downloading it and that's gonna bring up PowerPoint. So you can scroll through it here, but I recommend actually uh, putting this, uh, so if you click this little button down here in PowerPoint, it actually turns it into a slideshow. So I want to talk with you about the SEAL method itself, which is a helpful way to construct paragraphs. Um, and the first S, the S of the SEAL method is state your argument. And this is more or less the uh, topic sentence of your paper or, the, or of your particular paragraph. And that sounds very elementary as the, uh, we were talking about to topic sentences several years ago. But it's very effective, at least in academic writing, for you to state exactly where you want to go with this particular paragraph. So I want to give you an example of what that is, which is, in recent years have seen a rise in mental health awareness, but the means of this awareness brings both positive and negative consequences. You can see that in the middle of the paper. So if I'm writing a paper on teenage mental health, you can see that, that what I'm doing in this sentence is that I'm going to talk about mental health, changes in the recent periods, which is that uh, right, where it talks about the uh, rise in mental health awareness, well, health awareness in recent years, and then potential uh, impacts that you will explain if this was going to be your paragraph. So this is where you can now bring in evidence to support your claim. And I went and found this quote uh, from an online article, and I know we've used that website, The Conversation, a fair amount, and that's where this comes from. But, uh, one of this is Matthew Smith, who is a uh, a professor uh, and a scholar in this field and then notice what notice the way that I've brought in this quote to illustrate my point so the S is state your argument the I illustrate your point according to Matthew Smith society's increasing awareness of mental health issues and demand for mental health support has been driven in part by social media and easier access to information online while this is no bad thing in many ways, the related increase in self-diagnosis, including among children and adolescents, is clearly open to abuse by some organizations offering costly diagnoses and treatments. And treatments. So I have taken uh, Matthew Smith's point and I have illustrated with mine, and I wanted to point to how he illustrates the overall point of the paragraph when I'm talking about recent changes in mental health, and you can see it there in that first sentence. Um, but that he expands on it and so what are some of the key terms and I'm going to ask if you can spot them so I'm sorry to leave it too long there but I want, this next slide will illustrate the points where he takes the general idea and makes it more specific he adds in the idea of social media and easier access to information online increase in self-diagnosis acute including among children and adolescents, and then abuse by some organizations offering costly diagnoses and treatments. This is a good use of a source because the source does not really repeat your idea, but gives you room for expansion. 
So the next step is for you to do something with your expansion. So if the S is the state your argument, I is illustrated with a quote or paraphrase, the E is going to be explained the connection. So the E of the SEAL method calls for you to show how the evidence you're using connects to the main idea of the paragraph. So starting about middle of the way down, I think I have my mouse here. Yeah, so starting about middle of the way down, right here, as Smith explains, and notice how I reference his argument, the rise of information is not necessarily the problem, but the, the use of this new information is, especially when it is used by people who lack the background or support to make good decisions with the information they have. Organizations focusing specifically on the bottom line of profits can manipulate these impressionable minds at vulnerable times. The costs are greater than merely financial, however, as this focus on profits can lead to misdiagnoses that have devastating effects. So I'm not just repeating the same idea of the quote itself, but expanding on it and moving it around and talking about some of these detrimental effects. And so you're seeing this expansion. He's, Matthew Smith has opened the door for a greater discussion. I'm now taking it and saying, here's what we're gonna do with that information to really unpack it with more detail. And the next thing I can do is link, which is the L of the SEAL method, which is linked to the next idea. So watch what this paragraph does. And then moving on to the next topic, social media platforms like Instagram have recently come under consideration for the impact of their users offering mental health advice without the same care as a local practitioner. So what does that do? It, it means that I'm going to, if I'm a reader, I know exactly what's happening here is that this person is about to bring in an example from Instagram as evidence to this problem. So you can see how this is a rather simply stated uh, way to present your information. It's not that complicated. Ultimately, what these frameworks are really helpful in for is to give you some tools to which you can bring in that evidence. So for you, and I'm gonna click to exit here, sorry. <clears throat> I'll bring myself back up, hello. Um, so for you, as you're thinking about, you're constructing your paper and you've got lots of different pieces you can pull together. You've got uh, your evidence and evidence can take any number of forms, right? You're, the reason why we had you write a personal narrative was so that you could think about your own stake in this. So does your narrative apply here? Or could you bring in information from your source to make that effective claim where you are referencing their information to expand your argument effectively? I know that paragraphs can be just kind of a mysterious thing, and a lot of times we just throw stuff in there, hopefully that something will stick or that we're communicating effectively. And academic writing especially can seem very complicated because of all the things we've brought into it about what we're supposed to be doing. But I want you to err to the side of simplicity. Simply try this out. It gives you a nice framework on which you can build. So. If you're getting in and you have your outline and you're thinking, okay, now it's time to go. Start. State your argument. Illustrate it with a quote, a paraphrase. This may be, or if this is where you bring in your narrative, talk about your own personal investment in the topic, and then go on and build from there to this effective use of this information. My hope is, is that this lowers down the complications of paragraph writing. And then as you're writing your draft, if you have a paragraph that incorporates your connection to the topic, and then you have a paragraph that brings in a source, and then you expand on that source in the next paragraph, that's three paragraphs all of a sudden. If you're using this sort of, uh, this sort of helpful tool, it's a really easy way to expand your writing and get everything on the paper. Now, as you're working through that, you may not like the way it goes, or you're like, ah, I need to twist this around a little bit. That's completely fine good and necessary. But generally what I found most in freshman composition and really what I struggle with as a writer my entire writing career is how do I how do I what do I do with this information? Try this out. Get it on paper. That's the best thing you can do instead of stalling out with good ideas that never make it to the paper itself. So I hope this is resource is helpful for you. It's there on Blackboard for you to use. Now, in addition to that, I've also asked you to, uh, where did we go? There we are. I've also asked you to look at this article about now that you've done that, you've written your introduction last week, you've got your body paragraphs, and now you're looking at uh, your conclusion. That's strange that it did it like that. 
Okay, that's weird. I'm going to fix that link. But here's where it is actually going to take you, um, is how to write a compelling conclusion. And the biggest thing that you can do is to ask this question, how does your paper answer the so what question? What are your readers supposed to do with this information? So here, what you're going to be doing in your conclusion is just, one, telling everybody where you've been. So academic writing is just a little weirder than other types of writing because it really it's structured like uh, introduction as, I'm going to tell you where I'm going, then, the, then here's where I'm gone, this is the journey, and then the end is saying, and this is where I went. And so now you have that compelling story and you want to take your readers back through that, not in direct repetition of your introduction, but saying, in this case, here's a point I'm going to prove, here's me proving the point, here's what I proved. And then after you do that, and there's some great examples in this article, think about what you might want to do. So what do you want your readers to do? You can call them to action, say, you should do this based on the information you have. You can <clears throat> take a very narrow thing and move it to a much broader topic, which is contextualization here. Um, I don't know about the twist. I'd be careful using it. I mean, I think it's a helpful way. I like the way they describe it. But I don't know that it's always useful because sometimes, as you probably can imagine, the twist doesn't work. So give these ideas a try, especially this idea of future research. How could somebody take your argument and go forward with it? So if you're working on, for example, teenage mental health, how do we work it back to the lower to younger than teenagers or that transitionary period between teenage and adulthood, which is where you find, many of you find yourselves in that college uh, time right now. So whatever the case is, think about this as it, these are good, helpful ways to uh, construct your conclusion. One of the things I want you to keep in mind in this stage, especially in the drafting stage, is use whatever you can in terms of frameworks, outlines, whatever, to get your information on paper and to keep things moving forward. So my general observation at this stage is that this is where a lot of people stall out. Don't stall out just keep writing. You've got tools in this week, you've got tools from last week, so if you look at week 12 and week 13, you've got all kind of tools there. And I'm going to be responding back to a lot of the smaller assignments you've been completing this week so that you'll have a bunch coming in this week. And the idea there is that you will be able to take that information and write and effectively from that information. So please let me know if you have questions or concerns about that. Oh, and before I go here, uh, let's talk a little bit about Apparently my, uh, I did not open that up. Give me just a second, okay? Sorry. There we go. For some reason, the, the preview is not actually working. I'll make sure that that's working effectively beforehand. Um, but you, here you can see that you have the argument paper assignment sheet for your reference point. There it goes, sorry, my internet apparently is moving slow. But here is where you turn in your information for peer review. So <clears throat> when you click on start attempt, okay, there we go. So sorry about that, this is gonna be weird, but it's very similar to the things that we've done previously in this class where you have to turn in your peer review. And this is super important. You have to get the peer, your draft in to the peer review by Sunday night so that you can participate fully. I know it's been a little wonky as you've been trying to understand the format. I totally get that, but it's got to be done by that time if you want to get it done effectively and in time. So, <clears throat> excuse me, take, uh, get it done by Sunday night so that you can then respond to your peers by Wednesday. And I'll give you more information on that next week. So, rough draft due by this week. And like, and as next week goes, you'll be hearing back from your, uh, your peers, you'll be hearing back from me on your draft so that you can keep that writing process forward to turn in the paper next week. So if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to let me know. Before I post everything, I'll make sure Blackboard is working well. They may have some kind of system-wide thing going on. I will check it out. I hope you guys have a great week. And as always, reach out to me, cmoody at aum.edu. Take care.